2020, this is an unbelievable accomplishment. Uh, you guys suffering through all those first 20 episodes, hats off to you. You gotta thank the sponsor of the beer, which is the Vegas Real Food Project. Uh, their mission is to focus on growing the Las Vegas Valley food diversity. So on our website, on Ticket Cake, they're selling um, tickets for a five on five dinner and they're completely sold out. So I'm really happy for those guys. more interested in eating healthy and that makes me really happy, especially because, yeah, a little too much pizza sometimes, but we're happy to bring you pizza. pizza under the table. No, no, this, this, no, that's my cat, please, give me a break, it's my cat, yeah, that, that was a bad, that was bad, <laughs> yeah, thank Radio City for the cat. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but really, uh, everybody check out the new website, it's realfoodlv.com, where you can learn more about what's going on with the Vegas Real Food Project, and thanks again for sponsoring the beer. Alright, so on to the news round. Okay, well let's go ahead and start talking about that. I mean, you're, uh, you're an artist and designer, you're working with a variety of materials, and uh, let's talk about, um, uh, well actually give me, how do, how do you pronounce it? Zodia? Zodia? Uh, it's Zodiabula. Zodiabula, okay. Awkward, which is why. Z-O-D-I-A-B-U-L-A. Yeah. So tell us about the project. Uh, well, the, sh the show right now, it's, uh, it got extended through May 25th, and uh, it uses the Japanese technique Shishogi Bon, which is an architectural technique for burnt wood. So the process is I char the wood, I seal it, then I either paint on it or I cast it in bronze or just unique materials. Uh, my background is architecture as well, so uh, I kind of like to try to combine fine art, fine art and architecture. Uh, and cool. So it's kind of this interesting combo. So kind of I had a residency at the Cosmo <laughs> Beatrice Studio last year, and uh, I was able to experiment with that material and it kind of evolved into some new stuff. So it's fun. I still do, you know, fabrication I'll consistently, kind of like that pays the bills. So uh, I work on a lot of reclaimed materials, steel, wood, concrete, whatever. And so I just, uh, I've been aware of it and some buddies were doing it for a project and just kind of snapped. I, when I did uh, permanent art for the new city hall, I did it on solid wall, not antique. And I was like, let's burn some wood instead. And it just kind of evolved from there. Nice. Well, and what can people go visit to see some of your work? Uh, you can go to the Las Vegas City Hall, uh, the new one from Monday to Thursday. I got two permanent installations there. And then, uh, like I said, the show through May 25th. And furniture wise, uh, eat to the community table, the sign, plant wall, and then work in progress helping out some of the designs right there. And then one of my favorite bars in uh, BC, Boulder City, the Dillinger, the design for that. So check it out. It's awesome food. So, okay. and then check out the website. Alright, thanks Zach, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Right. Um, so Justin, let's talk about uh, business, huh? Business Startup Center, UNLV? Yeah, brand new center, I mean, when I say brand new, like a month old. Um, UNLV Business Startup Center, um, really to, to be a new resource for campus and community partners that uh, you know, want guidance in how to start up their business. Uh, you know, anything from mentorship, advice, counseling, through you know, getting a business license, setting up a lead canvas model, um, really anything that they may be tripping over in those first few you know, weeks, years that, uh, that they need help on to get their business off the ground. I tell people, you know, it's really from napkin to execution is where we want to be in. And then at some point, you know, push them out into the community and hopefully they can scale and grow. So you're right there at the very start, you're talking about napkin ideas, you'll think you come in and how would they get involved and well, you know, like never before has there really been a resource for undergrads at the university, and that's really one of the, the, the needs that we want to fill, is to find students, no matter what discipline they're studying in, whether they're a fine arts student that really has a good idea for an app, or maybe they're a computer science student that has a you know, similar idea. Um, we're kind of college agnostic, but we want, really want to be there to serve all of them and be a resource. And, and, and you know, some, some students don't really know where to go. They have a really good idea, but they don't know how to put that on paper. They don't know that they need to get a business license. They don't know how to you know, navigate financial or legal right. ramifications of starting a business. And so we're there to be a, a, a 
counseling and, and advice for them. We're there to plug them in with mentors in the community. We have really good partnerships throughout the community. So we're there to you know, hopefully help them get to a stage where then they can go out into the community and be successful. Nice. And is this a particular passion of yours? Is this why you took the job? And yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, it's kind of grown over the years, particularly from the last position that I was in. I, I was able to, you know, start working with the, the Vegas Tech community and really, um, you know, helping startups get through a lot of the, the, the legal and, and, and state policy issues that were out there. So um, it, it really was one that kind of started growing a, 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 a really passionate right. you know, to, to, to help out. And so and this opportunity came up to really uh, to really stand up the center, you know, leave something that never really been done before. I was really excited to be a part of it. Okay, and then what the uh, call to action can we get? Do you have a website you want people to check out or how can they get involved? You know, I think the easiest is just to follow us at UNLV Startup on, on Twitter is the easiest okay. way. There's a really long URL that's buried in the UNLV uh, <laughs> we can uh, website. Put, we can put it right down there. Maybe yeah, we can send that to do that. Yeah. Um, but it's really easy to contact us, contact us through Twitter, UNLV Startup. Um, and, and we'll certainly get back to you and, and hopefully help you in any way we can. Okay, cool. Have you uh, seen the new container park progress? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. What did you already think of it? Do you like, have you thought about the container park idea? Do you like it a lot? Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I think it's really interesting and, and you know unique, and, and that's really going to bring more focus and more eyeballs into into yeah. the downtown community. And that's really you know an interesting branding way of doing that. I think that it's uh, yeah. it's unique and, and will certainly drive traffic down. There's, there's some great large scale art. Have you seen the renderings of the stuff they're going to put down there? Yeah, no, I actually have uh, been in some of the fabrication, so we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, there's some cool things going on there, and uh, I think architecturally it could be a if it's done well, it could, it could be a, a great thing for Las Vegas. We've always kind of had a hard time, especially downtown with architecture, and things are starting to pick up. So, uh, so that'd be kind of cool if they can do a job there. It's going to open up the floodgates, so I think it could be good. Can you give us an update on the progress we're um, right now? Well, yeah, they actually finally completed the dam. You can see the picture right there, which is a oh yeah, yeah, yeah which is awesome. Like, yeah, I drive by there every day going home, and I'm just like, oh, they finally finished it. It's a, basically a 180 degree theater, so they'll have projections all like just surrounding it. It's really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's the flaming oh, mantis to protect it? You know, I think that goes so vulnerable right now. Right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's by its lonesome, and they just have the tower that has like the name on the side now. But they're definitely making progress. It's going to open in the fall. It's still a long time. Um, all of the name there. They're looking to have hold 20, 30 businesses, and they kind of pivoted away from being a container park because that wasn't like viable to more of a prefabricated cube park. But container park sounds better. So. <laughs> Yeah. So that's like a unique in the yeah. city downtown, you know, completely different. Yeah. It's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, it'd be nice having it. green space too, and just having a little. It's just shops. experimental quality. Like, how quick you can get businesses in and out. Well, it's twenty to thirty businesses, so. which that time is a half block. You know, like it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. So I'm excited for it. Okay. Any links where people can learn more about the container park? Um, I think it's linked on the downtown uh, project website. Okay. So more information on there. All right. All right. Thank you guys for coming out to the round table. Justin, I appreciate it. formed in 2007 called Originate. Its shared risk and shared reward investment model allows Originate to partner with entrepreneurs, startups, and enterprises to rapidly build new technology. So please welcome the best coder in the world, Rob Meadows. All of them in the same room. Ready to go. Zuckerberg, you kick, kick all their butts. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's talk about Haskell. Like, well, why do people suck so much and they can't program in Haskell? They asked me at UNLV when I was speaking the other day one piece of advice. You know, what, what do we need to do the, the graduating CS class? is like, learn Haskell. That's it. It's a, uh, the hardest language to learn, and if you can learn that, then you can learn anything. So. Yeah, and I'm one pretending to be like, can't program in Haskell. Oh, that was tough stuff. But I went to their the website. Over yeah. Then. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just at the end. What are we talking about? Um, okay, so let's talk about Haskell. Why? Uh, why do you look at it as uh, kind of this upper tier of programming languages? And yeah, what's... I mean, it, it's it's really pure. You know, you, you have to think in a different way, and and 
you know, you, you don't, it, it's not a practical language for the real world. In reality, I think I've seen two or three startups pitch us and say they're going to build in Haskell and I ask them why, and they say so we can recruit engineers. <laughs> that's, that's not a good, uh, not a good reason, but um, it, it, it's, it's academic, you know? If you can okay. learn that, then, then you can drive, scale everything from that. Okay, well, let's talk about that. I mean, so maybe look for Haskell in a programming language for a potential employee that you're going to hire, but what are the other keys? Like, how do you go about hiring your teams? Yeah, I mean, so we've, we've hired 120 developers, I think we're, we're up to now. We have all the, the interns and graduates coming on. We've got 20 people on board in the next uh, month here. So, you know, the, the, the real drive we look for is people who like to learn, who are, who are good at learning and passionate about continuing to grow. And you, you really don't need to know, well, you're not going to know much about programming for real um, coming out of this school, but um, we'll, we'll teach you very quickly. So the drive to learn, the, the proactiveness, you know, that, that's really kind of the core we look at. Are you able to solve problems? Great. And is that, do you recommend that for startups too? And then, and then how do you find like passion? I mean, you can't just ask somebody, like, are you passionate? So what are, you, what are your methods? Yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, it, it, depends, it depends what market you're in. You know, in the Bay Area, it's, it's really, really cutthroat hiring, you know, the right talent there. You know, anybody that we like has five offers and you know, those are all going to explode the next day and, and you don't have that time. You know, what I'd love to do is get people in a room and ask them to make a presentation to, to 10 people. Um, oh, and just anything they, they want, you know, give us a 15 minute presentation on anything you're passionate about and, and see how passionate oh, you can feel. Um, can you give an example of what was one of the standout ones that you remember? I mean, we've had people present everything from how to make a smoothie to, you know, <laughs> you know like you're the everything. program right now, yeah. you're kidding, that strawberry yeah. kiwi mix? Yeah, exactly, to, uh, you know, writing hardcore code. And um, we love to do pair programming in the interview, sit down and actually work with our, our developers together and, and just, just see how they solve our problems. Okay, well, one of the things I was super interested in during the pre-interview was your ability to build a company that aligns the rewards you get with the people that are actually uh, programming down there. So how, can you tell me, especially for startups that are, have a small team now, how can they structure their company to share incentives all the way down to these employees? Yeah, it's, you know, so we have a unique model. We have a fund, but when we invest in a company, we'll put developers in with the capital to the company. So um, the, the upside is there in, in a lot of different ways, but we pass 20% of that through to the engineers actually working on it. So they, they feel like they're part of something bigger. And you, with the startup, you can accomplish that with the equity, but it, it's nicer to give more concrete, you know, here's, here's the next milestone we're getting to and what it means to everybody and how we're going to share that if there's a big win. And, you know, we, we value, you know, growth of capital, but we also value learning experiences and, you know, being able to develop as an engineer or as an entrepreneur. So rewarding that and making sure that everything you do isn't just about the money, but about the growth and the process right. and the problems you're solving in the world and, and celebrating those wins along the way and making sure everybody shares part of that upside, whether it's just in a celebration of it or, or financially. So do you choose that at the top? You say, like, I want to work with this company because they're changing the world, or do you let them kind of choose what product, like, out of your potential clients, or how do you... Yeah, we decide we've looked at a lot of deals. I mean, we... We have offices in San Francisco and LA and New York and Stockholm and China, so we're and Las Vegas, of course. We're we're seeing deal flow from a lot of places. So, you know, we have the opportunity to work on what we want to work on. So when we're evaluating a deal, we look at, you know, all the standard stuff you would look at as a, a VC, but we look at is it gonna be challenging technically, or are the entrepreneurs gonna be fun to work with our you know, we oh, you look for the challenge, right? Because that's yeah. what inspired. Yeah, a lot of people are inspired with yeah, the newest technologies. Keeping yeah. keeping a hundred developers happy is, is hard. You don't want them to just crank out the next you know group, right. group on right. for cats or something. As you know, my group on for cats. Yeah, you really got Pandora for, for cats. Problems, but yeah. <laughs> They're not going for Pandora for cats. I know what I want to go. <laughs> um, okay, you know, another thing that I really liked about uh, our pre-interview was your willingness to talk about some of the failures, too. So, um, I would love to hear about how you sort of fumbled your way into this sort of successful company and some of the things maybe other people could learn. Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the biggest things that 
that we really value at, at Originate is is taking bigger risks to get bigger rewards, which means you're going to get bigger failures um, right. a lot, lot more. So if there's a deal we can do that, we can put a million dollars in and make two, or one we can put two million and make a hundred. We always go with the bigger. Well, you get that. We're in Vegas. So, <laughs> but um, failure-wise, I mean, I, you know, I had I had a couple really. Well, my very first startup I went to, not my fault, massive failure. So that was that was fun to see that, but. <laughs> no, right, yeah, yeah. you know, you got, you right. and this was right. 99, 99, 2000, you know, I was just right out of school, you know, we, I was employee number five, we raised 90 million dollars, and my first job was, all right, start hiring your boss, start hiring engineers, so it's like, but I, I just finished interviewing with you, they're like, <laughs> figure it out, so, you know, I, I interviewed, we hired 250 engineers, spent 80 of the 90 million dollars, the CEO came to me, he's like, yeah, we're going to have to start laying people off now. I was like, what? So, scaled all the way back down to I was the very last engineer at this company. And, uh, you know, my, my final paycheck was like, hey, you should uh, take the ping pong table home. <laughs> and, uh, it's like, a great experience. So, I got to see a lot of failure, a lot of ways people fail. And, and you know, it, it's interesting. Some people go down swinging. Some people go down crying. Some people just, you know, Go go home in a depression. So that that was that was interesting. Some people just so, go home and play ping pong. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. So I just get over it. And I think I got a desk out of the next week, and <laughs> you know, I, I took a lot of furniture home. But it, after that, I, I kind of had a bunch of successes myself. You know, I, I was after that. I was like, this is ridiculous. I can do this better. And started my own company, and started another one, and sold another one. So after that, I was like, all right, I can do every, I can do anything I want. So it's like. All right, let's find a lifestyle that's fun. You know, let's take a break from technology. So, I uh, I, I kind of backed into it. I love traveling, love parties, love women. So I backed into a few, a few. Uh, you know, is it movies right. or fashion? I was like, fashion. That that sounds good. I can start a clothing line. So that uh, that was 2006. Started a high-end women's clothing line. Hired a bunch of expensive consultants and threw money at it. Every time I had a, a problem, you just throw more money at it, and right. you know that it, a lot of learnings there. If, if I would have had no money at that point, it probably would have been much more successful. Um, but oh, really? or if I would have given up very early on that, it would have been much more successful. Mm -hmm. But you know, we 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 plowed through, and I hired more people to come in and tell me what to do, and eventually you took all the advice you've gotten over the, the period and it all cancels each other out and it turns out nobody knows what they're doing. So, six years later we sold the company for zero, so, <laughs> so for, for a ping pong table on yeah. the desk, yeah. Well, we sold the company for zero and maybe someday we'll get some money back from this factory in China that bought it, but I'm not going not gonna to count on that. Um, but you know, it's it's not just about the money. There are some really valuable lessons to be learned there. I mean, I, I take the three million dollars back, but yeah. you know, it's it, it was more about the journey and and accepting that you know I held on too long to actually call it a failure. But yeah. You know. Well, and, and is it possible to describe the feeling you get when you know you should pivot or quit, or is it just something you have to experience? Like, how would you? Try to like quantify that for somebody that hasn't been there and will be faced with that at some point. Yeah, that's a good question. It's when you start to really go into denial and you know you're in denial. You know, I, I remember a year into it, I went to the Magic Conference here. You know, came to Vegas and walked around, and I'm like, oh my goodness, like everybody here is doing the same thing. This is crazy. Like I'm just one of a hundred thousand clothing lines. And I was like. This can't be right. And I was like, no, we're gonna go hire more consultants to tell us how to do it differently. So, so you feel like you're going in some yeah, you just, inside. At that point it's like I, I knew, but I fought it for another four or five years. Okay. Alright, well uh, let's see what they call the action. So I know you I know you've got to originate, um, but uh, are you I mean, guess you're hiring about hundred and twenty people now and yeah, are you any call to action you wanna leave people with, the website to check it out or no, I'm, I'm excited what's happening in Vegas here, you know, this is our, our newest addition, our, our yeah. newest office here, and um, we're really excited about the entrepreneurial community, really excited about, you know, bringing, bringing more people here, you know, the, yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're looking at San Francisco, LA, New York, Stockholm, these are expensive cities, and, you know, it's really, 
really exciting to have a place where we can make an offer to, to somebody who actually wants to have a, a lifestyle that's affordable and build a, build a family or, or something and, and move them here. So okay. if you know people that want to move to Vegas, get them to move here. Yeah, too cool. I mean, do you think you have a consistent culture throughout all your different satellites? Do you work on that or do they kind of build their own? No, we have a core a core culture. You know, we have amazing people and we value risk and, you know, we value creating value and, you know, we value alignment and, and those things are, are threaded throughout. But, you know, every office kind of develops its own culture. You know, people yeah. walk into our LA office and they say, wow, you have the best looking developers we've ever seen. And, yeah. you know, San Francisco is, you know, Wow, you guys are right next door to Twitter and Facebook's there and you know, everyone's there. So it's and what do we have? What do we have here in Vegas? You've got Switch and you have Ogden and you've got some uh, you've got some staples. Container here. Park, the B, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, you've got <laughs> no traffic. <laughs> <laughs> On one Friday, May 10th. Show your support and enjoy the Las Vegas Jazz Connection, a 20 piece orchestra at the historic Fifth Street School. VIP tickets include a Meet the Artist Peter to Perception. More information and tickets are available on tippycake.com. If you're interested in the arts, Frankie T's Magazine will be presenting live art, Pinup Model Edition, every second Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. at the Pinup Point Gallery in the Arts District. Draw or photograph these models and get your creative juices flowing. There's limited space, so be sure to RSVP early on tippycake.com. Looks like if you're interested in jazz, today's your day. Las Vegas Academy of Performing Arts High School in the heart of downtown are having their students perform at the beat every Monday at 2.30 p.m. Support the students and enjoy a little break from your day with coffee and jazz. Yoga enthusiasts should check out this reading of Yoga Woman on Friday, May 24th at Urban Longs. Yoga Woman shares rich personal stories about how yoga transformed the lives of millions of overstimulated, overscheduled, multitasking modern women. I'm sure a lot of us can read to that. More information available on tkk.com. To round this off, the indie band Murder by Death will be performing at Beauty Bar on Wednesday, May 29th. Their lush and orchestrated songs are reminiscent of Johnny Cash and Radiohead. Tickets are also going fast, so be sure to pin yours on tkk.com. Let's go over to John Sterling to talk about a new project in residential downtown. All right, John, you are crazy. <laughs> you are so crazy. I wish that so was just, a from this. <laughs> yeah, not to digest this. So you guys have to understand that John is trying to crowdfund a house that we can all party with. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be on his Indiegogo campaign. You're going to try to get the money to pay for the house, and if you do, then you're promising everything from parties to co-working to places for visitors to stay. Um, but how did you, like, I mean, how did you even think to this? Think of this. Um, because I'm crazy. Yeah, because you're crazy. So, and yeah, I love it. Yeah, so I showed up in Las Vegas six weeks ago from San Francisco, right? So I was here with a, a um, you know, short-term plans to be like, all right, I'm gonna go see if what everyone's saying about Las Vegas is for real, right? It's like all well, downtown Vegas noise. Like they're definitely hearing it in San Francisco. I'm like, mm, that's fine. I read TechCrunch too, but it's like, I, I want to come out and talk to some people. And be sure right. This is for real. So I showed up and like, mm, yeah, this is for real. So said, you know, when the when I showed up and the community welcomed me with open arms, I'm like, okay, that's the experience that needs to be duplicated over and over and over for anyone that comes to visit. Yeah. So part of this is is just me wanting to tackle something big and interesting that's useful. And the other part is me wanting to taunt all my friends in San Francisco and show them how ridiculous they're being by saying San Francisco. <laughs> okay, so I mean this is a big task though. Um, if you do buy this house, what are you gonna make the culture like or how can people feel like they're gonna get their values worth or just tell me more just tell me what's going on inside your head so we can share sure, it out. Sure. Yeah, so um, the vision for the house is to make it a, you know, a, by day you're looking at co-working and co-creating space. So just kind of a you know, it's like if, if you want to get out of downtown, you know, downtown proper here we are at Fremont Street and go to some place that's a little more quiet, a little more relaxed. How far away is it? It's about a mile from where we're sitting. Okay. So, uh, easy, it's an easy, easy walk, I do it every day. So that's one option. Uh, and then provides temporary lodging for people who want to check out Vegas. If they're not quite sure, you don't want to come see for themselves like I did. 
or even people who are in transition. So if you need a place for a couple of weeks, you know, like be able to, to solve that problem without making a huge financial or emotional burden to, to do it somewhere else. And you're going to act as sort of the house manager, or what do you see your role as? It's going to be sort of choosing who needs to stay, who doesn't, but you're trying to make room for everybody. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. so I'll be, I'll be the engineer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a short period of time. But Can we take it on yeah, webcam? I think it's going to be a party all the time, right? No, that's the monetization option. Can be a giant. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Talking distance, that's important. All right, well, tell people about the campaign. Where can they go to give you money and learn more? And uh, VegasTechHouse.com. And how many more days do you have on this? Very uh, just started? Probably about two weeks left. Okay. So the, the trick is, the thing, the thing you can't see on Indiegogo is that uh, we already had the money committed to do this before we even started. Oh. Uh, you can just see planet. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a great plan. Right. So the coolest way for this to go down is going to be support from the community, either coming to the party, coming to the hackathon, like purchasing prepaid temporary yeah. housing. Uh, but if all of that falls apart, then I have people lined up who are going to make up the difference because they're committed to seeing this happen. So, all right. so now the question is how big is the house or how many are we going to get? That's, that's really what we're going to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But I love it. I mean, to know without a Boston charge, it really is up to community. And I think that would be such an amazing, amazing thing. So I really wish you luck. John, thank you for coming the podcast. And uh, thank you guys for coming out. Follow us, remember like a flashback. Vegas Tech, don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.